Have you noticed stores have been out of stock? We have the answer. Halloween season is just around the corner and Fort Worth Zoo is doing its best to celebrate. Since spooky season is here, we're here to tell you what horror movies are coming out this October. All this and more coming up on NHS TV Live. COVID-19 has affected the world in many ways, but one common problem due to the virus is popping up more and more, supply chain issues. From shipping companies having less workers on cargo boats to shortages on production resources like computer chips, products are not only being made in less quantity, but are also harder to ship to the U.S. This has brought the global supply chain for everything from cars to grocery store items to a grinding halt. The federal government is now stepping in to try and assist in getting the supply chains moving again, with President Biden announcing the Port of Los Angeles would be moving to 24-7 operation, and commitments from large private companies to improve the speed of delivery in a speech yesterday. The Ports of Los Angeles, the Port of Los Angeles announced today that it's going to be, begin operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Specifically, Walmart is committing as much as a 50% increase in the use of off-peak hours over the next several weeks. Additionally, FedEx and UPS, two of our nation's biggest freight movers, are committing today to significantly increase the amount of goods they're moving at night. This will definitely be something you want to keep in mind as you go, in to, buy th as you go to buy things this holiday season. The U.S. will lift restrictions starting in November on the Canadian and Mexican borders on vaccinated foreign travelers, ending a 19-month ban on non-essential travel from said countries to the U.S. U.S. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas said in a statement that the U.S. will begin allowing travelers from Mexico and Canada who are fully vaccinated for COVID-19 to enter the United States for non-essential purposes, like visiting friends and family or for tourism. This comes after a September announcement that fully vaccinated travelers from 33 other countries, such as China and the majority of Europe, would be allowed to travel to the U.S. for non-essential travel. We will keep you updated to, on any changes to COVID regulations and guidelines. Now, here's a little treat for all of you crazy little people that love to write, like me. Our Literary Faction Club is hosting a Fright, Write, and Harvest contest, and they need your submissions. Enter your short stories, novellas, poetry, lyrics, or one of your act plays for a chance at a Barnes & Noble's gift certificates. Please send a submission to Mrs. Nelton at justine.nelton at nasdtx.org by October 31st, and if you have any questions, you can email her or Daniela Canto at daniela.conto at student.nasatx.org. Now, if you'd rather get a little bit messy and play with some paint, you can join the art club. Their first meeting will be held October 26th at 4 p.m. in room 902. They will be creating suspension prints and you don't want to miss out. If you have any questions, you can ask Mrs. Shabran, Mr. Lumbry, or Mrs. Kelly. We do have Reese in studio with us to sit down with Harmony Martin to give us a deeper dive in the American Sign Language Honor Society. Thanks, Thomas. I'm here with Harmony Martin to discuss ASL Honor Society. So Harmony, what exactly is ASL of Honor Society? ASL Honor Society is a society combined, uh, created with students who love, respect, and enjoy ASL and deaf culture. Right. So what are some of the requirements for joining? You must have a 3.0 GPA, a 3.5 ASL GPA, and for ASL 1 students, it's a $5 fee. For ASL 2 students, it's a $25 fee. What are some of the benefits? For ASL 2 students, they can take leadership roles within the society for seniors. Um, they can earn honors cords, and there's also an ASL HS scholarship open. That's really cool. So, um, what are... Is there any packets or any due dates? Uh, yes, in room 712, there are two packets. One is pink and one is white. The pink one is for ASL 1 students. The, pink, or the, the, the white one is for ASL 2 students. Both packets are due aug uh, October 31st. Perfect. Well, you heard it, heard it here, Texans. If you're interested in joining, go to room 712 and Miss Maya's room. Back to you, anchors. 
Thank you, Reese, for the highlight on the American Sign Language Honor Society. If you would like to join an ASL offered class here on campus, don't forget to talk with your counselor when it's time for next year's class registration. It's not quite that time yet, but do you know what time it is? Spooky season. Kirsten, I hear that Fort Worth State was doing something special to celebrate Halloween. What's going on, Kirsten? It looks like people aren't the only ones getting festive this season. An entire zoo is. The Fort Worth Zoo is hosting its annual Boo at the Zoo event, which, has been doing, which it has been doing for 30 years. On October 29th, 30th, and the 31st, Fort Worth Zoo adds a spooky twist to the experience in honor of Halloween. Changes include a pumpkin patch, costume stage shows, and special Halloween treats like caramel apples. Tickle, tickets are, are included in journal admission. You can also volunteer for this event and earn community service hours. And don't forget, <laughs> Halloween costumes are welcomed. To get more info on this awesome event, you can go to fortworthzoo.org slash boo at the zoo. And changes at the zoo aren't the only chilling thing that we're talking about today. Horror movies are definitely not for the faint of heart, but if you do enjoy them, here are a few ones coming out this month. Releasing tomorrow, October 15th, Antlers, starring Carrie Russell and Jesse Plemons, is about a mysterious creature escaping from confinement to wreak havoc in a small town in Oregon. Also coming out tomorrow is yet another Halloween movie, this time called Halloween Kills, starring Jamie Lee Curtis and Kyle Richards from the original Halloween movie. A vigilant mob hunts down the unstoppable killer, Michael Myers, to end his reign of terror once and for all. Make sure to head out to theaters these next few weeks and check him, them out. <laughs> I should definitely try to watch some of these movies, especially at night, even though I'm probably going to lose some precious hours of sleep. Oh, and don't worry, guys. We do have a new album for y'all who aren't in the spooky mood just yet. For the first time over six years, Adele is finally back. She's re-entering the music industry with force, releasing a single titled Easy On Me as part of her newest album, 30. Adele has stated that the album is far more personal to her than her last pieces has ever been, and its central inspiration came from her divorce with the British pop star Simon Kinetti, which has finalized this last May after two years of court battles. The single will be released tomorrow, and the full album is set to release November 19. Okay, so I, she literally hasn't like talked, released anything in the last six years. And six yeah. years ago, I listened to her like all the time. I've noticed that. I've I don't listen to her personally, but I probably will be now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should definitely try it out. We should, yes. And we should also listen to her, some of her older songs to see how they like compare with each other. Oh yes, we should definitely do that. Oh yes. yeah, we definitely should. All right, Texans, that's all we have. This has been NHS TV Live.